everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Lorela and my channel is about metaphysical, spirituality, wellness and mythology. Today I'm going to give a two week update on my gluten free diet. So two weeks ago today I decided to start a gluten free diet and just see how that went for me. If it didn't work out then I figured that I could just start eating gluten again at any point. There is no gluten intolerance test at the doctor or anything to say if you are gluten intolerant. So the best way to do this is just to eliminate gluten from your diet and see what your results are and sometimes even to reintroduce gluten and see if you have some of the same problems come back that you were experiencing before. There is a test at the doctor for celiac disease, but not gluten intolerance. Some of the reasons that I had an idea that maybe I was gluten intolerant were that I have been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome as a teenager and psoriasis. I've been diagnosed by two separate doctors with that to say that I have psoriasis and people who have psoriasis are more likely to be gluten intolerant because it can cause more inflammation in your body. And the same with irritable bowel syndrome, if you're diagnosed with that, then often you can also be gluten intolerant. I've also been diagnosed with anemia numerous times, and this can also go along with gluten intolerance. So all of these things adding up just made me think maybe I'm gluten intolerant and it's worth giving this diet a try to see if it improves my health in any way. And it definitely has. So with the results that I've been having, I would definitely say that I am gluten intolerant. Some of the symptoms that I was having before I eliminated gluten was bloating, stomach cramps, just feeling general inflammation and fatigue all the time and especially after I would eat a meal I just would feel like I need to go to sleep and sometimes even be in so much pain in my stomach and so bloated and I just have had all of that disappear since I've stopped eating gluten so I no longer have any bloating, cramping, fatigue my energy in general has, if not tripled. So I'm just feeling really a whole lot better and heap less inflammation, which is hard to describe, but it's almost as if my body was being, some kind of comparison would be if I was having sandpaper rubbed all in the side of my body and I'm just all irritated and inflamed and uncomfortable and that just feeling of general inflammation is gone. It's hard to describe but that's the best way that I can put it into words is that my entire body just felt uncomfortable all the time and that's just disappeared for me. With psoriasis you can often have arthritis and a lot of the research facts to do with psoriasis go along with my condition. So it did get worse in my 20s. It did bring on arthritis more around the age of 35, which I'm 35 years old this year. And starting last year, my arthritis began to get really, really uh, a lot worse. Not debilitating, but definitely worse and more noticeable. And since this diet, I've been having arthritis free days and I've hardly had that for almost a year now. So I'm having whole days where I'm just not even noticing any arthritis in my body and that's just amazing to me. I'm also feeling like this has just been two weeks. So some of the results might even not be totally noticeable yet. But if this is how much better I feel after two weeks, then I'm definitely loving those results. I feel like I've been able to get back into yoga more, which I am a big yoga lover and I started yoga at 14 years old with some classes that I used to do. 
Um, my classes were also really amazing. I was overlooking the ocean as I used to live in Australia and I would just do yoga all the time after that because I learned some of the techniques and then I no longer had to go to the classes although they were in a really beautiful place and my yoga instructor was really helpful but once you've learned some of the techniques you can just do this at home or as I would like to do it even on the beach or at the park or just carry my yoga mat around with me and do yoga wherever I feel like doing yoga but with having so much inflammation, especially in my stomach, I was finding it really hard to do that. Especially as yoga is a lot to do with working your core and strengthening your core. And basically your core is right where your stomach is. So if you've got inflammation in this area and then really working to strengthen your core can be really difficult so it was just the best yoga session that I've done for such a long time last night and my body just was really enjoying that yoga for the first time in a long long time. One research fact about gluten intolerance is that it can become a lot worse after you've had a child or been through pregnancy and five years ago now I had my son who I love very much and I can't put into words how much love I have for him but I can say that I definitely noticed in my body that gluten intolerance probably became worse around this time. It's just known that if you have this gene for gluten intolerance supposedly there is some kind of genes that you can have for gluten intolerance then it can really come out as an inflammation in your body after you've had a baby. Um, my psoriasis also got really a lot worse around this time, although it did become worse in my 20s in, in general. I didn't have as many allergic reactions or sensitivities until after I had a baby. And I actually used to work for a while in a cosmetics department and I have spoken to other women who have also had children and then just became really allergic to all different products and even products that they weren't allergic to before. So it's almost like your body going through pregnancy and having a child just makes you a lot more sensitive to things. It probably is to do with the fact that I already was this way and then after this moment, it just became a lot worse for me. Going into some of the withdrawals that I had, and you actually do get withdrawal symptoms from gluten. I'm not going to lie, but they were really, really difficult. And the first week not eating gluten was really hard on my body. Really, really hard, actually. And I read that a lot of people who do stop eating gluten or actually start eating it again because they just can't handle the withdrawals. So withdrawing from gluten is actually almost similar to withdrawing from some kind of opioid as it gives the same receptors in your brain when you eat gluten. It makes you feel almost euphoric and happy in some ways. So the withdrawals are quite similar, some of them, to withdrawing from opioids, which is a pretty strong withdrawal to be having. It can be debilitating to have these withdrawals. It's not something to take lightly. And I did have days where I was pretty much debilitated, even if it was just for an hour or two. There was an hour or two where I was almost physically incapable of not moving. I would just lie there and I was so dizzy and I felt like if I stood up that I was going to pass out or vomit and I felt really nauseous and really really awful actually. I was tired and I had about three days like this. That was the worst. So I stopped eating gluten on a Wednesday and then by the Saturday and Sunday, I was having hours of the day where I couldn't move. I just had to lie there and just 
the best way was just to sleep is the only thing that could really make me feel better. I actually noticed the first withdrawal symptom the day after I stopped eating gluten, so I had no gluten on the Wednesday. And then by the Thursday afternoon, I was lying down and I fell asleep. And then I woke up and I felt like I was going to pass out. So I couldn't even stand up for about 15 minutes or so. And that was the first I noticed. And then by the weekend, I was having hours like this where I just couldn't even move. I felt really, really awful. As your body heals while you're sleeping, this can be a great way to get through these withdrawals. Of course, there's times in your day where you can't just take time out and just sleep whenever you need to. So that can be difficult. And it's something that I would put into mind that I didn't think about so much, is that there might even be times where you need to take time out from your day-to-day -day life to get through these withdrawal symptoms. Another thing that can help with withdrawal is to practice fasting. And fasting is also not something to be taken lightly. And if I'm going to talk about fasting, then I am going to say that it's definitely something you need to be careful to do. And at no point should you start fasting and not eating because you want to lose weight or anything. Although it can help with weight loss, I would not want to put it out there that you should start fasting because you want to lose weight. I don't see that as any kind of beneficial to your body to stop eating for weight loss. But for some medical conditions, fasting can be really beneficial. Actually, especially psoriasis and withdrawing from something such as gluten as it just helps to eliminate and cleanse your body. For me also being empathic, I find that fasting can really help my body to eliminate unwanted energies. I have been big into fasting since my 20s and again I wouldn't recommend it for everybody and there's times that you shouldn't do this such as pregnancy, breastfeeding, at no point during those times have I ever practiced fasting. But I do enjoy fasting and I have done that for probably a little over 10 years now on and off. For me, the best way to practice fasting is in the morning. There's all different ways that you can do fasting, but I prefer to do this in the morning. So if you look at the word breakfast and you break that down, it's actually break fast. So essentially you're breaking your fast that you've been fasting overnight in your sleep. And I just really like to continue on with the fasting in the morning and usually then we'll eat around lunchtime. Not every single day because there's some days where I just really feel like I need something to eat in the morning and then I will listen to my body and what my body needs. And if my body needs food in the morning, then I will eat something. Usually it's something small, like uh, a nut bar or just an oat cracker or an oat biscuit or something along those lines. But sometimes even I will eat a fairly big breakfast, um, eggs and toast and things like that. But I definitely feel like I do my fasting in the morning and my body really does better when I do this. So there has been some research as to how beneficial breakfast is and for a long time they recommended that you eat breakfast, your body needs breakfast to get through the day, it will stop you being more hungry later on which helps you to lose weight and all of these different things. But recently, over the last year, they've actually came out with the first research that shows that breakfast actually can sometimes be non-beneficial and can lead to weight gain and unhealthy things happening to your body. And so that's quite interesting to see the first research that shows that breakfast is not always such an important meal of the day. When I'm doing fasting, there's a difference between my, when my body feels like I need to eat and during those days I will actually eat if my body feels like I really need to eat. 
Of course, when you're fasting though, you do still feel hungry. So it's almost like just ignoring that feeling of hunger. And generally the feeling goes away after 10 minutes. And I know that that sounds a bit weird to just ignore the fact that you're hungry, but that's just how fasting works. So I just get through it. And often my best way to do that is I will have a coffee that I will drink throughout those hours of the morning. Usually only one coffee. I mean, drinking too much coffee, excess amounts of caffeine is not great for anybody. So I will usually make a really big iced coffee and drink this. Another negative withdrawal symptom that I had was that my arthritis actually got a lot worse for the first week. And this can be to do with having flu-like symptoms while you're withdrawing from gluten. So your joints are aching and your body is just generally aching. And I will admit that I was a little bit worried about this in the beginning because my arthritis actually got really bad and I was just thinking to myself, this is not the results that I was hoping for. But once I actually got through that first week, as I said, for the second week, I was then having arthritis free days, which I've not had for a really long time. I was also reading a lot of mixed information as I was researching gluten free diets. And it can be difficult when you are trying to research and educate yourself about something and there's all of this mixed information. But I just went with my instincts as to what was right and what was wrong. And some of the information that I read that was some kind of misleading to me was that even if you feel like you're gluten intolerant, you should not follow a gluten free diet because the harm of cutting out carbohydrates is actually worse than just eating gluten and the fact that your brain doesn't function properly unless you're eating carbohydrates and you really can only get these carbohydrates from gluten products and as far as I can tell my brain is still functioning fine and actually you can get carbohydrates from other foods such as potato, sweet potato, milk again. And as I said, I love to drink my glass of milk in the morning. So there's many ways to get carbohydrates without eating gluten. Heaps of different vegetables such as corn, which is also loaded, sweet corn, which is loaded with other nutritional benefits. There's just a long list of things that you can eat that have carbohydrates in there, like quinoa, so many different things. It's not that you need to get carbohydrates from eating gluten and that you should continue eating gluten even if you feel gluten intolerant. And the only people that should cut out gluten are people suffering from celiac disease and I just found that information to be misleading and not even totally correct. There was two times that I accidentally ate gluten over the last two weeks and both times it was a sauce that got me. So me and sauce, well yeah I love sauce and it was of course the sauce that got me both times. There is a, a term for this amongst people who don't eat gluten and it's called being glutened. So basically I got glutened twice accidentally, not, not realizing it. But in the end, it was kind of a good thing to happen because even just those tiny small amounts that I ate, instantly my stomach hurt. It was almost straight away, five minutes after I had been eating. And just to think to myself that that's how I felt every single day after almost every single meal. And that's just a really big thing for me basically to realize that I must be gluten intolerant. And those couple of times that I accidentally ate it, it definitely made me feel like, yes, I'm gluten intolerant. There are even some mental health effects to go along with being gluten free. And being gluten intolerant can make you feel 
anxiety and that's also something that I've noticed is that I'm just feeling much less anxious all the time. Again, that's something that I've struggled with in the past is anxiety and I also just feel like that's almost disappeared and that's almost amazing for me. So just to feel like all of these negative things that was going on for me are pretty much gone. Of course, withdrawal effects are different for everybody and some people suffer from actually feeling really depressed and down once they become gluten free. Some of it to do with the fact that if you do realize I'm definitely gluten intolerant, and then you can feel really down about the fact that you can no longer eat this food and your whole diet's changed. And if you do eat gluten, then you're going to feel sick or feel unwell. And that can be really difficult for some people. And as I said, I have noticed some mental and emotional effects. So I'm feeling a lot less anxious, but I'm certainly not grieving the fact that I can't eat gluten as some people do feel really upset about that, that they can no longer eat it. But I more feel if I am feeling any kind of depressed about it, then I would say that I'm feeling more that why didn't I stop eating gluten earlier? Because I am feeling so much better and wow, if this is the difference in two weeks and I could have been feeling this great all the time and that's sort of the thing that I'm feeling. Another thing that can help with the withdrawals is eating probiotics, which you can get in yogurts. And I just have a really hard time to eat any kind of yogurt and also any kind of fruit. I'm just not a big fruit eater, but I have found a way to prepare fruit, freeze it, put it in the freezer, make smoothies out of it, add in my probiotic yogurts mix it with some coconut milk or some soy milk and this has been a really great way for me to get these probiotics in my diet and to get extra fruit in my diet which I was not eating before so some of my energy increase could also be to do with the fact that on top of not eating gluten I've upped my intake of vegetables and fruits throughout the day and I just will make sure to have one of these smoothies with my lunch every day. And that's just been a really great way for me to get some probiotics into my diet. Withdrawal symptoms can also be to do with the fact of whether you slowly cut out gluten or whether you go cold turkey on gluten and you just totally stop eating it all at one time. And this is the method that I followed is that I just stopped eating gluten so I woke up on Wednesday two weeks ago and I no longer ate gluten in my diet. If you are struggling with withdrawals one of the ways that can help is to just to slowly eliminate it but I did not do this especially because I really wanted to notice the effects of am I definitely gluten intolerant and sort of testing myself and I just felt like the best way to do this was to totally cut it out starting from one day and just to see if my body felt better from that day onwards. Withdrawals can also have to do with the amount of gluten that you were eating before. So if your diet was mostly gluten, then of course you are going to have a lot more withdrawals than somebody who eats a little bit, bit less gluten in their diet. If you were to learn from the couple of mistakes that I made, then my mistakes would be to factor in withdrawals from gluten, which I didn't put much thought to before I started my diet. And also that it actually took a little bit more time than what I figured that it would take. So it took me a few hours to clean out my kitchen of all the different gluten products and to sort the kitchen into what's gluten and what's not gluten free on top of researching everything that you buy and to check everything that you're consuming as to whether it has gluten 
and there's gluten in a lot more things than what I would have thought that it was in. And of course to prepare a lot of meals and recipes that you've not made before can be a little bit more time consuming. Or although there was a lot of meals included in my meal plans that I have previously made that are gluten free. So to end this video, I would say that I'm definitely gluten intolerant and my gluten free diet has been extremely beneficial to me and to my health. And of course everyone is different and I wouldn't recommend a gluten free diet to every single person. And I'm not going to say that every everybody should be not eating gluten. It's just something that I've decided to do for myself and for my own health. And if you also feel that you might be gluten intolerant, this just was a video to give some tips about how to manage a gluten free diet and to update on how I'm going being gluten free as it's something that's new to me. And if you have any questions or comments to do with gluten intolerance or a gluten free diet, Perhaps you're also gluten free and could offer me some advice on to things that you do in your gluten free diet, then feel free to leave those questions and comments down below. I look forward to talking to you all next time and thank you for watching. Bye!